Hello! In this video, we're going to quickly cover a simple installation of Ubuntu Server 2204 LTS, with LTS meaning long-term support. Ubuntu Server, being different from Ubuntu Desktop, does not have a GUI installed by default. Therefore, we're going to perform a simple installation configuring the network manually with a no DHCP. The installation steps are the same if installed into a physical device or to a virtual machine. Install into a public cloud provider such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, among others, will differ a little as most providers already have uploaded images. First, we need to obtain our installation media. Head on over to the Ubuntu website, and under the Download tab, you will see the options to download Ubuntu for the various platforms. For our purpose here, we are using the Ubuntu server. After you finish downloading, you should have an ISO file about 1.5 gigabytes in size, the file name will be similar to what's shown here. The system requirements for Ubuntu are relatively modest. However, for this installation, I am using Microsoft Server 2022 v Next, the development version of the next iteration of Windows Server, Hyper-V, as the virtualization host. We have four vCPU processors, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 50 gigabyte hard drive, a 10 gigabit hypervisor synthetic NIC with approximately one gigabit internet connection. After we boot with our media, we are presented with the first GNU Grub screen. What is Grub? Grub stands for Grand Unified Bootloader and is typically used to boot into Linux systems. Select, try or install Ubuntu Server. Select your preferred language and keyboard layout. For this example, select Ubuntu Server. At the Network Connection screen, hit the Tab key or the up and down arrows to move between the selections. Select ETH0 and hit Enter. Select Edit IPv4 and change the method to Manual. For Subnet, identify your network in CEDAR notation. Specify the IP address you're going to use. Specify your gateway, otherwise known as your router. List your DNS name servers. Here we're going to use Google's public DNS servers. For search domains, if on a domain in which your DNS server is authoritative, put your domain here. Otherwise, you can leave it blank. Save when finished and hit the tab key to done. If you have a proxy, put the address here. Otherwise, leave blank. Leave mirror address as listed unless you have reason to use another distribution mirror. For our example, we're not going to update the installer. We're going to continue with the one that shipped with the installation media. For our installation, we'll continue with the default using the entire disk. Later, we may cover a custom storage layout. Hit Done, followed by Done. Tab to continue. Enter your name. It can be anything, but this is a display name not your username. Enter a name for your server, making sure you do not exceed 15 characters. Select a username. This is what you will use to log into the computer. It is case sensitive, so select carefully. Enter and confirm a strong password. For most installations, you will want to select Install Open SSH Server. This will allow you to log in from remote terminals. Assuming you have no SSH identities to import, hit the tab key to done. For this installation, we're not going to add any additional packages during the installation. Hit the tab key to done. Tab 2, full view log to follow a verbose installation log. When completed, remove your installation media and select Reboot Now. During your first boot, you may see a lot of what appears to be gibberish on the screen. This is normal. Proceed to log in with your username and password. When you log in, you'll see that you have a dollar sign prompt. This is to indicate that you're logged in as a standard user. A hashtag prompt indicates you're logged in as root, which we'll cover later. The first action we want to take is to fully update the system. To do so, we need to elevate our privileges by using sudo. Type sudo apt-update 
ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade. When prompted, type your password. The system will update its inventory and find necessary updates. Type Y to continue with the update. If you see the pink screen, Package Configuration, select OK. Once the system is fully updated and you're back to the prompt, type sudo reboot to reboot the system. After you log in following the reboot, you should see zero updates can be applied immediately. To see the operating system name and version, type cat forward slash etc forward slash os dash release. To see the full kernel information, type uname dash a. For the most part, to do anything that requires elevated writes, you will invoke the command by typing sudo. However, in the case where you may need to log in as the actual root user, type sudo su space dash and enter your password when prompted. Now you will see that you are logged in as root with the hashtag prompt. At this point, be very careful with the commands you type. Now, type exit to return to your normal user account. We have just covered a simple and easy installation of Ubuntu Server. The install procedures is similar for recent older versions, such as 2004, 1804, and 1604. If you found this video useful or entertaining, please like, subscribe, and pass it on the others. Thank you.